Have you ever found yourself staring at your computer screen unable to make that crucial decision? I was staring the other day at my Facebook profile and I was mulling over a set of professional photos that we had just taken of our family. The time had come to choose my new profile pic, a new background pic, and any others that I was going to post. I was sitting there staring at the screen, agonizing over which one to choose, how much to crop, what to write in the caption, whether to tag my wife, whether to keep it on my timeline, what would everyone think? And Truth be told, I wanted people to like it, to react to it, to comment on it. And it reminded me of the ancient myth of Narcissus. Narcissus was a demigod of great beauty who tormented his suitors with unreciprocated love, particularly the nymph Echo. His arrogance prompted the goddess of revenge, Nemesis, to lure him to a pond where for the first time he saw a reflection of himself. The legend goes that he began to despair once he realized that the love he felt for his own reflection could never be returned. Some versions say that he simply became part of the landscape by staring at the pond so long. And other versions say that he became so depressed that he took his own life. So there I was, gazing at my Facebook profile like Narcissus with his pond. I began thinking back to a, another screen profile in my digital history, the, the AIM screen name, maybe you have one too. Today's digital culture emphasizes the self-celebrity, but I hadn't thought about it as an identity struggle until recently. I couldn't remember when I started thinking I was something special, but my screen name would indicate that it was early in my teenage years. I mean, C-dub stud isn't exactly subtle when it comes to self-expression. We're a culture obsessed with celebrities. And Web 2.0, or the, the version of the internet that exists with social media, has turned each of us into a mini celebrity. If you don't believe me, just ask someone from another country for the first five Americans that they can think of. I'm guessing that Supreme Court justices and astronauts and educational reformers, they're not cracking the top five. However, athletes, musicians, movie stars, and more recently, reality TV stars are probably the majority of their five. In fact, in 2006, one study revealed that 51% of people ages 18 to 25 reported that being famous is an important life goal. To put that into context, that's five times as many as those who said becoming more spiritual was an important life goal. We're saturated with celebrities and we want to be celebrities. Andy Warhol's premonition that everyone would be famous for 15 minutes didn't even account for things like E! and YouTube. But in the midst of this celebrity epidemic, the Christ-following young adult must remember the profound and challenging words of Jesus. Those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. As I sat staring at my screen, mulling over pictures, I realized that my soul needed reorienting. And in the next few minutes, I'd like to walk with you through how that happened. There are two stories in the book of Luke and one in Matthew where Jesus tells his disciples that the path to exaltation is humility. When a principle like this shows up in multiple contexts, we have good reason to believe that this is the kind of thing that Jesus must have said over and over. It's fair to say that this is one of the central elements of being a Christ follower. Philippians 2 reminds us that Jesus himself modeled humility, not self-exaltation, as the means by which his kingdom would advance. This early Christian hymn says that Jesus humbled himself and that his father subsequently exalted him to the name that is above every name. Like all of Jesus' teaching, he isn't asking us to do anything that he himself didn't perfectly demonstrate. When he was sitting at that dinner table in Luke 14 and he rebuked the host for trying to posture himself in the seat of honor, Jesus' teaching reflected how he lived. When he told the story of the Pharisee and the tax collector in their very different prayer postures, his teaching was validated by his lifestyle. When he rebuked the Pharisees outright for a number of hypocritical offenses in Matthew 23, they had nothing to challenge him with because his humility was truly honorable. Jesus won people's hearts by living humbly. This lesson holds true in today's world as well. People who exalt themselves have nowhere to go but down. Athletes who believe they're larger than life are performing on limited bodies, and although I think their self-celebrity could be why many of them use performance-enhancing drugs. 
People who are famous for their appearance will one day succumb to aging, although the rise in plastic surgery leads us to believe you can look young forever. People at the top of their game in business, in politics, in education, in anything are one mistake or one competitor away from losing their status at the table. When we believe ourselves to be greater than we are, we have nowhere to go but down. This is the brilliance in Jesus' countercultural teaching both then and now. Don't put yourself higher. Choose the humblest of seats. Take the lowest of options, and you'll find that you have nowhere to go but up. Choose humility so that you avoid humiliation. Sadly, even the Christian community falls prey to the celebrity obsession. There are pastors whose podcasts are more downloaded, whose books sell more copies, whose churches grow to massive numbers, and they're invited to high-profile events and conferences. And as they gain notoriety, little subsets of the body start to form underneath their brands and products. Preachers, worship bands, and even churches can get swept up in the celebrity craze. Paul's admission to the Corinthian church in his first letter reminds us that we're not to become celebrities at the expense of the gospel. Paul wasn't interested in out-preaching Apollos or out-apostling Peter. He was interested in the advancement of the gospel and the transformation of souls. John the Baptist is another good example of humility to all of us who seek to follow Christ. When his ministry began to shrink in John chapter 3 because the crowds were starting to gather around Jesus and the baptism his disciples were performing, John made an epic statement of humility when he said, He must increase and I must decrease. He used the image of the best man and groom to describe his role in relation to Jesus. The joy that John experienced as the best man to the cosmic wedding can only be experienced by choosing humility above self-exaltation. Paul and John have shown us the impact and joy of abandoning the obsession with self-celebrity by choosing the path of humility. I was in a meeting the other day where the leader told the story of someone applying for a job at a church. In the interview, the candidate had a list of terms that probably rivaled the writers of many bands. I'm not against being discerning in a job hunt, so I'll be gracious with the person that I don't know, but remember, this was an interview at a church. So one of the interviewers stopped the candidate in the middle of the interview, and he referenced John chapter 3. He told the candidate, We want to know if you'll join our team and descend into greatness. I like that. Descend into greatness. When I was in college, I attended a passion conference in Atlanta. Tens of thousands of young adults gathered for a few days of worship and spiritual growth. And if I'm being honest, I went to that conference in large part because of the fame and reputation of the speakers and bands. But on the first night of the conference, the lead pastor of the whole thing talked about Isaiah 26.8 and how passion was forming a 26.8 generation. That passage says, Yes, Lord, walking in the ways of your truth, we wait eagerly for you, for your name and your renown are the desires of our soul. It's been years since I attended that conference, but I knew on that night that the conference was not about the celebrity of the bands or speakers. And it stuck with me that if I embedded that scripture in my heart, that my life was not going to be about me either. His name and his renown are the desire of my soul. He must increase, and we must decrease. The call to descend into greatness is counterintuitive and transformational. So here I am, almost 10 years later, still struggling to fight off the pull towards self-celebritization. I did choose some pictures from my profile, and I still do edit my posts and think about why I'm writing them. I know, even as a Christian, that our culture and my own flesh are fighting for me to elevate myself. But I'm also striving to walk in the ways of his truth. And his name and his renown are truly the desire of my soul. I'm choosing to descend into greatness, trusting that those who humble themselves will be exalted, just like Jesus promised. Humility is our greatest weapon against a hyper-individualistic, self-exalting culture. It reminds us to glorify God and to celebrate others. For when glory is given rather than grabbed, we find the freedom to break away from the digital pond that ensnares and despairs our souls.